Hey, I'm William Muse. I'm here to talk today about EDI and give you a quick overview that's in uh, some nice, easy to understand words so you can kind of understand what's happening behind the scenes. It may be a little slower than newer technologies, but it's still true and it still works and it's still very out there. All right, the first thing you need to know about EDI is it's been around forever in, in computer terms. I mean, it has been around long enough so that everybody's had their hand in it, everybody's had a say in it. There is an international conglomeration of a bunch of geeks that tell you exactly what you can put into it, right? You have very, very rigid specs. And when I say specs, it's specifications, and they're long, and they're wordy, and they tell you exactly what you can and can't do with it. Um, the EDI type is noted on a numbering system. Uh, some of you might have heard 204, 990, 997, 210s, 110s, 315s, 314s, 214s. All these are numbers. And when, when you say that on the street, somebody thinks you're crazy. But when you say that to a techie geek like me, then I know exactly what type of message you're sending and what you're trying to do. Um, EDI has been around for many years, which makes it very rigid with all the specifications, but it does have a good bit of flexibility, such as the 204 is actually a warehouse order, but it can also be used to tender freight or dispatch freight to um, to a carrier. So it has a bit of flexibility built into it so that it's more useful, but it is a very rigid of what you can and can't do with it. Uh, EDI doesn't do rating. Uh, rating usually means that you need an answer back and in it much quicker time than sometimes you get EDI back. Um, EDI is also used for less time sensitive operations. If I am trying to find out how long it's going to take to ship something on Amazon, they're using not EDI because EDI doesn't work in that kind of time sensitive environment. It works very well when you have a, a one hour window, a two hour window, a 30 minute window, those kind of things, that's okay. But when you have a one minute window, EDI is probably not gonna be the tool you're gonna to use for this. The one thing EDI does that's better than everybody else is it has a good verification of file transfer because of the possible time lag. You've got to know that that file actually got there and that file was processed. So it has a built-in functional acknowledgement that, hey, I got the file, I'll get to it when I feel like it. So that's important to know. It is very good at verifying that you have and haven't gotten the file. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what an EDI kind of looks like. This is an address, an EDI. You can kind of tell what it is. There's an N1, an N3, and an N4, all to make into a, by the way, this is from a 204 EDI, in case you were wondering, because everybody wonders what number they're assigned to. And literally the file, the, the way that they do this is they have an N1 is the line number. Then they do a star and a BT means it's a built to. Then you have the name of the location, which in this club, this case is the freight plus ship. And then you have N3 is the next line, which has part of the address on it, with stars delineating whether it's the name, the address name, the address line one and address line two, and there can be more on there. N4 is telling you the city, state, and zip. And the reason I use this is it's so easy to see because you know what an address is, you know what all it should have in it, and you can kind of look at it and see what's going on. Um, and as you can see, there's not that much flexibility of what you can put on those lines. It has to be a line assigned to put on there. And each one of those N1, N3, N4 are have pages of documentation on how you're supposed to use them. So how does EDI kind of work? Let's look at it over here. So you're gonna have to have a server that can make a EDI. In this case, we're gonna look at the 204 and a tender in this, in this small example here. There are thousands of different types of EDI. Uh, we usually use um, what's called an X12 standard in the transportation, transportation industry. There are other standards that you use for healthcare, for financial and other um, different businesses. But we usually use the X12 standards to make it, so everybody's using kind of in the same page. So we're gonna just look at a 204. So when you send a 204 tender, so your server will actually make a tender 204 that'll look kind of like the bottom side only it'll be like 40 lines long and then it will send it over to the in this case for a tender it'll be a carrier's EDI server 
that file will sit there until a process will run on a scheduled basis to pick it up. So the first thing that will happen is on the scheduled basis to say we picked it up and we got it, you'll get a 9997 acknowledgement from it. As you can see right here, oops, didn't hit the spotlight. Right here, you see this acknowledgement? This is all it's saying is, hey, I got your file and it looked good. That doesn't mean they accepted the load, threw the load away, it doesn't mean anything. It just means they got your file. And sometimes there are built-in things that say, hey, it was formatted correctly or not formatted correctly. So you get an acknowledgement. This is why I say it's very good to verify the file transfers. Not everybody does the 997 acknowledgements because that's more to put in when you're doing development. Sometimes we're in a rush, but in the most cases, yeah, we do. Um, then after they get the file, they look at it, they check it out, they look at their capacity, then they'll send you an actual 990 tender response. Okay. So if you look, this is where EDI gets kind of confusing. You have a 204 tender, you have a 997 acknowledgement, and then you have a 990 tender response. Everything, all these numbers run together, and I, I swear if you guys listen to me close enough, I'm sure I've mixed them up five or six times already. There's a lot of times where you work in one number and you stay in that number for a while and it gets stuck in your head and you say it over and over. But on the tender response, that actually tells you it could be an hour, two hour, three hours later that they'll actually take the load or they want. But in the end, EDI itself is very rigid. Everybody uses the same specifications because no matter what business you're in, they have pages and pages of documentation that you have to follow. You may or may not use all the fields in that EDI documentation. You may not use even half of them, but if the ones you do use, you have to follow that exact line. And that's a very quick overview at a very high level of EDI just for you guys. Thanks for listening.